On Rescue 911, a woman tries desperately to stop a runaway car full of kids. Come for the ambulance, quick! She I said, who are you hurt at? She told me, she said, I can't breathe. Now her husband must face the most difficult moment in his life. How do you tell your kids that, that there's a possibility that they lost their mother? Don't miss this real life, true story on the next Rescue 911. On May 15, 1990, Becky Day and her children were preparing to return home after visiting relatives in Tecumseh, Oklahoma. But before leaving town, Becky had a last-minute errand to run. On her way to the airport, Becky pulled into the parking lot of a local mini market. I'm just going to be in here a second. Well, I told the children, I said, I'll just be in here for a second, stay in the car, which they did a lot. It's a little town, and people just run in the store and leave their kids in the car all the time. You don't worry about anybody taking your kids. Sheila Ryder happened to be driving by. I couldn't really tell what was going on, but I knew this was unusual for a car to be rolling out into Highway 9, which is a very busy highway. Although Sherry had managed to turn the steering wheel of the car enough to keep it out of the oncoming traffic, the car had struck her in the process. Get help! Come through the ambulance, quick! She's hurt! I said, where are you hurt at? She told me she's I can't. When we continue. She looked up to me, and all she could keep repeating was, it says, are those kids OK? Are those kids OK? You know, and that, that'll be in my, it's in my mind forever, I guess. Follow unsung heroes saving lives and witness courage and compassion in action. OK, I'll be in the back. I'm going to be in the back of the ambulance waiting for you. Paramedics, next on Discovery Health Channel. She just laid there and kind of moaned. She made groaning noises. But just don't move her. Don't move her. I was even afraid that she was going to die. Sherry, everything's going to be all right. We're here. Someone at the scene who recognized the victim as Sherry Hagen had immediately called her husband Rick. It was just an empty feeling, not knowing what had happened, how bad it was. Sherry, what happened? She looked up to me, and all she could keep repeating was, it says, are those kids OK? Are those kids OK? You know, and that, that'll be in my, etched in my mind forever, I guess. Denny Parton was the first paramedic on the scene. 
I give her a quick once over. I listen to her chest because supposedly this is where she had most of the trauma. The, the car had run up onto her chest. So I'm really very worried about internal injuries. Her main complaint at this time is not her breathing. She's complaining a lot of severe spinal pain right in the middle of her back. She's also complaining of some tingling and some paralysis going down her lower extremities. She cannot move her legs as well as I think somebody should be able to, probably due to the injury to her spine. One minute over 70. I felt like if I had not left the kids there, this wouldn't have happened. So there was a, a real sense of feeling responsible for what had taken place. At nearby Mission Hills Hospital, doctors began running a series of tests to determine the extent of Sherry's injuries. You got the other IV in there? Okay. Yeah. This is going to hurt. Big out's coming right now. Oh. Squeeze my hand. Oh. Uh, Pat Thomason, the administrator who was our friend, just came up and, and put her arm around me and said, it doesn't get, look good, Rick. It, she's really in bad shape. And we may lose her. Sherry was airlifted 60 miles to the trauma unit of Mercy Hospital, where she was put under the care of Dr. Timothy Chest Grody. Tubes, meaning tubes between her ribs and outside her lungs. Broken ribs had punctured her left lung. X-rays also revealed a crushed vertebrae pressing against her spinal cord. She needed surgery, but was not yet stable enough to survive it. The mortality rate is 20 to 30 percent of those people will die from complications of being that ill. So it's one thing to get there and get stabilized, it's another to get through the rocky course that comes with the injuries. How do you tell your kids that, that there's a possibility that they lost their mother? And I guess the biggest problem of, of trying to explain it was it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't a disease and it wasn't a car wreck. It was a situation where she was trying to save, trying to save somebody else's life. On the ninth night, further complications set in. For some reason, there was either a clog in the tubing or a blockage in her lungs. Sherry, what's wrong? Just relax, Sherry. Are you not getting enough air? Okay, so you're breathing down. Rick, you want to Versus Rick, you gotta leave. I need some help. Then over the PA system, you hear code blue for room 162. The tube had been pulled from her right chest because the, it had seen that the air leak had sealed when the lung collapsed again on the right side. And in fact, her heart quit. Let's get another tube in here so we can reintubate her. Atropine again? She's still good. Okay, we have a rhythm now. Atropine was given, which is a drug to stimulate the heart. What's the rhythm? She's asystole on the monitor. Chest compressions. We need to move Smoke this tube, pulse. too. She's not moving any air. Epinephrine in. Epinephrine's in. I feel the pulse. OK, so we got a rhythm. Stop. Stop Rhythm's back. She's okay. back at 68. 68. There's a marked difference in breath sounds. Fortunately, she was a young, healthy person, and the rhythm was reestablished. Okay. When Dr. Brody came out, to tell me that, the, that she was okay or had stabilized again. And, you know, and I could see that he was, has had the scare of his life too. Two weeks later, doctors were finally able to remove the bone fragments from Sherry's spine, but they were unsure whether she'd ever walk again. I don't really resent what happened to me. I think part of the reason for that is because I have made such a complete recovery. This incident has restored my faith in human nature. When I was in the hospital, I mean, I probably got 20 cards a day. And they were all from people, you know, a lot of them, I didn't even know who they were. She's a very giving person. I wouldn't begrudge her if she did it again, and I'm sure she would do it if she was capable to do it again. She's a hero. I'm proud of her. Sherry Hagen was awarded the prestigious Carnegie Medal of Honor for risking her life to try to save three children she did not know. One year later, she finally got a chance to meet them. Hi, Sherry. 
You look wonderful. Uh, Thanks. I do watch what I do with the kids, not just with the car, but I find myself a lot more alert to the possibility of danger now with anything that they do. I wish that, you know, her injuries wouldn't have happened, but I am really grateful that she was there and that she was willing to help my kids. I guess I felt like I had to do something because I'm not the kind of person that would be able to sleep at night if I would have stood there and that car would have went onto the highway and those children would have been hurt. I just wish I could have been a bit more coordinated doing it so that I wouldn't have gotten hurt so badly. But I sleep fine at night now. Come on. Next. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. <laughs>